to Jester's of Ravenloft, where a group of comedians try to escape the horrors of the mists. After several mishaps by wet change, Rumble Foreskin dealt the final blow to the Gargoyle King. Dell learned from Werner that they would be safe until the following night, but without a clear foe, the quarreling began anew. New Rogue offended Rumble Foreskin, Shadow Nemesis stole New Rogue's Master Pea Powder, and Tyler was constantly disturbed from his sleep by Jack Magnum. As a sort of truce, New Rogue, Shadow Nemesis, and the Doctor Deputy stayed up all night digging a hole to bury broken gargoyles. Can the troop make it through another long day ahead of fighting foes, each other, and exhaustion? I doubt it. <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome to this week's recording of Jesters of Ravenloft. We've got the whole gang back together for an exciting adventure. I saw the question pop up in chat from La Sombra de Luz. Is the general setting book Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft? You bet your ass it is. All the domains are fully original. I have not dipped into any of the domains included in that book unless by accident I'm copying them, in which case, hey, you know, we all follow similar paths when we think about horror. But we're definitely using that book on top of everything else. It's so nice to have you all here. It's so nice to have our gang back together. Uh, I'm also very excited to see people have already spotted the new emotes that Dell put together. We're very impressed by them ourselves. We have an animated Ivan. Uh which Dell was like, animation is too much work. What am I doing? <laughs> but it's real. It took cool. all night. That's, that's so why good. the goat isn't animated. Uh, but we got those for anybody uh, who's subbing right now. And if anybody is curious, there's some super fun stuff. If you go to dumdumdice.com and check the merchandise, Dell also did some additional art that we accidentally told the cast about. So you missed Guy and Adam losing their minds for five minutes. <laughs> But if you go there, there is new Jesters of Ravenloft merch. We have T-shirts available with the show logo. And there is a mug with all four of our heroes as chibis the whole way around. So you can see Shadow Nemesis with his gun. You can see Tyler with his horns and long hair. New Rogue. He's got the hands. He's got the feet. He's our ghostly little boy. Mm -hmm. And we've got Dell, super spooky and haunted by ghosts, all super powered up. So go check those out. Those are available now. So there's cool new merch there. We will have some other things coming up in the near future. I'm determined to do more with the chibis because I'm in love with them. Dell, did you have any particular uh, inspirations that came to you in the real world? Inspirations for, for this kind of art? Anything style vibes or anything for you? Oh, man. I, I think it's just it is just fun to draw the characters that everyone describes. That's my bane of my existence is anytime anyone describes an outfit or anything. I'm like, no, no, I want to draw it. I need to know what it looks like. So <laughs> it was fun to just get to draw the full bodies of everybody after, you know, mostly doing the portraits for them. So and I had actual free time. So I was able to do the emotes as requested by chat last week. They did say Excellent. they wanted a bat and a goat. Uh, so I did it, and then I've like, already me. seen a request for a goblin making a stink face. So just know, Dell. <laughs> I know their, it's their just hunger gonna, is unending. I do not promise anything, but who knows? If I get inspired, <laughs> things might happen. Yeah, but no, it's so nice to be back. It's nice to have some people here, even people figuring out what what books we got going on. We're always happy to have new people. I saw some You're new welcome. subs right at the, oh, the well kickoff done. of this. Oh. So before we dive in, <laughs> I am going to hide chat so I don't lose my mind because I cannot read and talk at the same time and I just did it for a second which is why you heard two words blend together that didn't make sense <laughs> uh, and I will try to explain what has happened in this adventure up to this point for anybody who is joining us now three comedians and a stage manager the sketch troupe known as Wet Change were performing at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. They were performing on stage. They hit the pie sketch, their big, super good sketch that always closes out the shows. And they were kind of bombing. And that's when the mist came in and brought these regular people into the horrifying world of Ravenloft. It turned out that Ezra, the god of the mists, had done an elaborate spell to try to draw heroes from the one multiversal existence that doesn't have magic. So it was the only place so stupid that D&D would never lock them out. And instead of getting war veterans or or heroes of, of the ages, uh, comedians. So they have been struggling through Ravenloft, trying to survive, trying to gain the powers required to survive, and ultimately to achieve their goal of returning back home by helping Ezra escape from the mists. 
In the first domain, building up to fighting the Dark Lord, our heroes uh, trained in their traditional D&D classes. Uh, the only thing we put in place for meta reasons, because otherwise all of our brains exploded, as we just said, the version of Earth where these people came from, there are no, there's no Dungeons and Dragons. Everything else in pop culture exists, but not Dungeons and Dragons, because, oh man... I dodged that bullet in advance by thinking about it. Uh, they have all trained in various skills within the world. So Tyler has trained as a blade singer. So he is a wizard that is also extra punchy. Uh, Adam, who, I mean, we'll get into the character journeys in a minute, but Adam is trained as a barbarian using the depths of his rage to be able to take big old swings. And he is also following the path of the giant. So when he rages, he gets real tall. Guy has uh, trained as a cleric, worshiping Ezra, the god of the mists, the god of life, according to Guy, having met exactly one cleric of Ezra in one domain. And Del has trained as, according to her very shitty trainer's advice, the first visual bard in all of the universe. Uh, he wasn't great, but she is. They've also all gained haunted powers, cursing them within Ravenloft. Tyler now has green skin, flowing black hair, large horns, and a pinky he can remove to do creepy magic at will. Dell has become possessed and is interacting with ghosts in the world around her. She also carries a stylus that allows her to carve into reality. So her magic is fueled by both the ghosts of the realm she is within and her ability to manipulate visually the things around her. Guy sadly died. And he was brought back with uh, from the elbow to the end of his hands and from the knees to his feet, uh, spectral ghostly limbs that were sacrificed to fuel the rest of his body. So whenever he touches anybody with those, it starts killing them immediately. Uh, he also has no memory of his waking life. So he renamed himself New Rogue and has been going on a journey to find religion, find his friends and perhaps find out who he is being haunted by visions and memories of his past, slowly kind of piecing together who he once was. And then there is Adam, who was possessed by a symbiote, went mad, declared himself the true avatar of evil and the Black Knight, uh, put on evil armor, and he has be he's got his own little symbiote in his head telling him that he should either waste people's time to feed it or eat their brains. And let me tell you, Adam does not like wasting people's time. So Shadow Nemesis has been murdering his way around the world. He also adopted the Squires. After he defeated the Black Knight, uh, he took these evil little minions uh, under his veritable wing, along with the child of some people he murdered. And he lied to them and raised them as his own before they turned against him at the end of his journey in the first domain where he rose up to become the Dark Lord. Escaping that first realm, our heroes now know that each of them needs to defeat the Dark Lord of a domain. And then Ezra, through some magical manipulations, will kind of slot them in so that as they gain more of these powers, the downside is it will create four very specific hellscapes that are emotionally taunting nightmares for each of our four heroes. But at the end, theoretically, they can return to Earth. Inside this new domain, they were joined by the one squire who had died in Adam's service, who was brought back because due to the temporal nature of the whole thing, being dead meant that squire didn't have to hate him anymore. So they <laughs> rejoined their journeys uh, and they were also joined by Rumple Foreskin, a horse that is a skeleton fueled by fire, who is also hunting for all of the other bone horses that were left behind hundreds of years ago when Rumple Foreskin was pressed into service. I did not name this horse, chat name this horse. Just want to make that clear for anybody joining right up front i'm fully capable of naming a horse that this one just wasn't me so i want credit <laughs> given where credit is due our heroes ended up inside this new realm they journeyed through the woods they met a strange goblin named the Nilbog. they fought <laughs> dolls that stole their bodies they got their bodies back but the doctor deputy's body was murdered by adam who lied and said ezra did it so the doctor deputy's still inside a doll they ended up inside protection town which was run by a a lone artificer and elderly man named denton arthur who is protecting and maintaining this village with robots who happily sent them forth uh, to try to help them achieve the goal of defeating an evil demon Demon. They met Acer Sanguine, uh, who had created four doppelgangers, one of each of them, evil doppelgangers to spread throughout the realm and cause havoc and chaos to guarantee that these new heroes couldn't actually make a positive name for themselves. Our heroes had heard back about two different threats. One that was taking part, uh, taking place in the desert uh, and the other that's taking place in the barren hills. And they decided to go after stream labbing Tyler perhaps the Tyler doppelganger I will throw out there. And we, uh, we use Streamlabs, and as you've already seen, Adam got dropped once. So, you know, sometimes the fans are like, hey, let's let's make a direct call out, and we let it happen. Yeah. So they're making their way there and had to spend the night in either the Forest of Screams 
or the Nameless Graveyard. Deciding that they needed to sleep, screams sounded like it would keep them awake. They went to the Nameless Graveyard. They ended up having a very pleasant Thanksgiving dinner after smashing some gargoyles they thought would be dangerous. When, surprise, surprise, the gargoyles put themselves back together. I mean, one of them very well and the rest kind of shittily and ended up battling our heroes until they were ultimately defeated by the power of Thanksgiving. Uh, our heroes at that point uh, kind of turned on each other for a little bit and then sort of decided to rest. Only Tyler was kept alive by new rogues, new goat that like pooped and peed on him and wouldn't let him sleep. Uh, and Shadow Nemesis demanded that they smash up all the gargoyles and bury them in a hole because for him, that was very important. The next morning, our heroes <laughs> set off, finally leaving the nameless graveyard to head towards the barren hills. And that is where we are at now. Did I miss anything significant? Oh, Shadow Nemesis is a gun. Chad gave him a gun. So he's yeah. gonna have a gun now. <laughs> yep. Adam's got a gun. I, I fired one bullet. That's true. Yep. He shot That's a gargoyle true. in the yeah. head. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that I missed that you that any of our players think is significant? Are there any questions you have that are player questions, not character questions? <sighs> no. No. Oh yeah. Shadow no. Nemesis uh, ran into a really hot demon lady and spent the whole night having sex with her like two nights ago after agreeing to have children. Oh, yeah. That also oh, happened. Right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to remember it. Last yeah, name Sanguino. He, uh, we found yeah, he that out. Per- he forgot that her last name could be important, and the rest of the group pointed out to him <laughs> that her last name is also Sanguine, the same last name as the demon who's running this realm. Yeah. No that one solved player. that. They got attacked by a gargoyle. That was player Adam, too. That wasn't just, like, <laughs> in-game in Adam. They both <laughs> forgot. Like, well, I don't know. Yeah. All righty. With that, it's time for us all to hide chat. Mm-hmm. Because it's time for us to return to Ravenloft. You heroes of wet change are riding in your carriage towards the limits of the nameless graveyard. As we know, it is a large, massive space. It is a new day. Some of you are well rested. The Dells, the Rumpel Foreskins of the world, arguably mm-hmm. the new rogues who doesn't really need to sleep. Some of you are slightly tired. The Tylers of the world who were mistreated by their godson goat, <laughs> Jack Magnum. And then there is the very tired, but ultimately very satisfied by his diggings and gargoyle smashings, Shadow Nemesis. Oh yeah. There is some time as you ride forward through the graveyard uh, being lightly jostled, so it is very tough to sleep inside your armored carriage on an ongoing ride. Uh, Around you, you just see the graveyard as it was. It seems like you passed into this strange graveyard space and you are passing out of it. To make it clear what you were seeing to your left, that is the impossible lake. Uh, The reason why it's impossible is becoming very clear to all of you, which is you can't see the other side of this lake. You know, based on the realm, that the amount of travel time, you should be able to theoretically see it, but you cannot. To your right, outside the nameless graveyard is where you are seeing a tall, threatening, deciduous forest. And in front of you are the gates that lead out of the nameless graveyard. And those gates swing open, revealing a massive ogre that steps into place. What? (laughs) Can you all roll me a perception? Oh, okay. <sighs> Why do I check? 17. 17 perception for me. Eight. <clears throat> it's a seven for me. I'm just being a new roger talking or something. <laughs> no. uh, appropriately, it's a three. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Okay, guys, guys, stop arguing. Guys, <laughs> I, uh, I'm everyone. asleep. I'm asleep on the roof. I like. I, <laughs> I, I, I like kind of like spread out on the roof and use my spider powers to just like like go to sleep. Yeah, your, your legs are sitting crisscross applesauce on the ceiling, and your upper body is just fully relaxed, like gravity yeah. is weighing you down. <laughs> it's the best it's ever been for someone's back, and tremendously annoying to be slapped by Adam. Yeah, hand. there's arms. So <laughs> many yeah. arms. Just swinging around. Uh, Tyler, you are the one to... You all see this ogre, but Tyler, you are the only one to see from within the windows and slots that are available from inside your fortified carriage, that there is a howda on this ogre's shoulders. It is a small, like, strapped-up backpack and a platform just over its head. And when you look up there, Tyler, you see a goblin dressed in pink robes covered in bells with a stick with a little goblin face on the end wearing a hat, and he's just dancing away, and you just Uh. see him jangling, and you recognize the Nilbog. 
It's Noblin. The Nilbog. That's not <laughs> Noblin. It's the Nilbog. <laughs> Nil- clearly said it was Nilbog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and the Nilbog jumps down off down. his ogre and starts approaching the rest of you. To be clear, the ogre is about 12 feet tall. It's a significant jump, but he does Jesus. a cool little backflip on his way down, and he just starts, like, shimmying and dancing towards the door of the carriage. I'll stick my head out out the door uh, and say, uh, uh, hi, hi there. Hey, it's the Nilbog. How you doing? And he's oh. jangling away, and you hear the bells hi. on the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I remember you. Uh, I'm 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 doing good. Glad you got out of that forest. Okay. Oh yeah, I slept there all night. I thought you guys would come over and be cool in the forest, but instead you were <laughs> cool in the graveyard. You guys have fun with all those gargoyles. It's so neato. Ooh. Uh, yeah. I guess we had fun. Yeah, we're all in one piece, so that's that's good. Um, what brings you to the the nameless graveyard? Well, so you guys stayed here overnight, so I thought I'd come see, like, what's going on. You guys seem like the only cool people in this whole domain. Ooh, I'm the new bug. <laughs> oh, well, uh, no, just give me a second, and I'll just bring my head in and say, everyone, uh, it's the Nilbog. He's he's here. He was on top of that ogre. Uh, everybody oh. say hi, Nilbog. Hi. Hi, hi, hi Nilbog. Hey. I'm glad you didn't burn up in the fire. <clears throat> oh, no way, no way. I'm here because because you guys seem cool. You guys going to go do something else cool? Because I, I know you probably had fun with those dolls, and I, I heard you had fun with the gargoyle. So, like, do you guys need bigger, cooler fun? Ooh. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how much fun we had actually with we're with going all of to, that. If if I understand what you mean by fun correctly, we're we're gonna go have fun at the Barren Hills. We're gonna go there next. Ooh, the Barren Hills. That sounds pretty fun. Do you want me to make it a, a little more fun for you? And he's just jangling away, like shaking his little staff. He's got a, he's got, yeah. got like a weird like 1920s, like just doing weird back and forth dances. He can't stop okay. moving. No, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, make, make it. Tell him, tell him to make it fun. Well, uh, uh, let's, fun. Uh, how, how, can we hear your pitch and then decide on whether we want the fun or not? I don't know. Then it takes away the whole surprise. Won't be being surprised be super fun? Uh, I, I don't, I don't know, guys. Do we want surprises? I'm feeling a little surprised out from gargoyles attacking us after we smash them last yeah, night. Yeah, we've had a plethora of surprises already. Yeah, no, we're we're good without surprises. We like uh, predictable fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. We like, Can you roll me a persuasion? <laughs> Are you asking me for it? Yeah. 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 You're the one. You seem to be taking lead on this conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sleepy. I I can't talk. Oh, that's good. That's a good number. Persuasion, yeah. you say? Yep. So that's plus zero for a total of four. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought you were going to be safe because he rolled a five, but that's enough to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> lie, Tyler, lie. You're both just not really persuasive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just two two charismaless beings interacting. He's yeah. just phoning in the dance. He's like, he's not even trying. What no. is this? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I thought you'd appreciate the surprises. So if you, you you just you just make it another one. Ooh, that'd be the good stuff, you know. If you guys are cool, you'd like surprises. Ugh, just take Nilbog. the surprise. I gotta go to sleep. What is like your deal, man? Uh, you know, you seem have a like a good time, bro. You yeah, guys good cool. Time. Everybody like, in this domain like, doesn't seem cool like you. Are we cool because we we almost die? <clears throat> is that is that is that what makes us cool? It is pretty exciting, don't you think? Who wants well, to just live their life and die old and weird? I raise my hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I follow through. N- N- Nilbog, if you're super into cool, awesome stuff, do you do cool, awesome, fun stuff and deal with surprises all the time too? Or are you not cool and you just watch other people be cool? Oh, no, I'm cool as hell. You know, I do all the cool stuff. I, I died so many times. <laughs> Wait, uh, you've died? Oh, yeah, like all the cool people do, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, you know... You gotta try all the flavors, you know. <laughs> I've I've tried that flavor, my friend. Uh, fellow former corpse here, so since we're both cool people, maybe you could reveal to us the, um, the least cool 
safest uh, path forward, maybe, you know, since you and I are uh, two peas in a pod. Can you roll me a persuasion? Oh, boy. Fuck. Ah, that's a two. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, the nil oh, bog buddy. rolled a four. So oh, wait, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, bottom. it was a plus. Oh, wait, actually. Sorry. I, I was think looking at perception. I was looking at perception. <laughs> I have a plus two. And because I got my baggie back, um, which contains my stone of decent luck, I get a plus five. So you oh. roll, you get a plus three. So you're at five, which yep. will get you there. Because uh, yep. uh, he rolled Ooh. a four. So the twists and turns <clears throat> of the modifiers. Oh my God. He looks at you and goes, Oh, you guys are those people who just want to live or whatever. Okay. Fine. Just go to the Barren Hills straight away, I guess. And like, uh, like, and you can feel that he is just on the cusp of telling you something you really want to know, New Rogue. Uh, what? what Miss reference that gives you the exact tool you need to just push oh, okay. that limit. Okay. Uh, pushes. He wants me to push the limit. Okay. You, okay. You got to convince him. You got to convince him. You feel like he just needs that one more push. Okay. Uh, I did. Sorry, but the, the the sound cut out. Did you say I have a pop culture reference for this? Or no? You have a pop culture reference that that gives you you it contextualizes this for you, and you know exactly what you have to do to get him to tell you what you want to know. Okay. Okay. So I'm contextualizing. Um, this is like in Golden Girls, where Sophia <laughs> she goes to the waterfront and. Um, there's an old man there and they get along just like, you know, like the, we do like two peas in a pod kind of, you know, shared experience of being old, but you know, um, and then it turns out the guy has dementia and she's so concerned, but she just continues being nice to him to try and win him over. Uh, doesn't end great, to this but situation. this, like oh. I have to win him over. So I'm going to keep on being nice and I'm going to be like, Hey, ooh, you like cool things though, right, fellow former deadite? Uh, well, um, how do you, what, what say you to extreme sports? Because we have a little fella in our carriage who happens to rock a tech deck pretty hardcorely. Five, ten. Uh, <laughs> so what you're saying is he does a trick on his thing and then I do a trick and whoever does the worst trick dies. Yeah. Whoa! I, I we don't have to do the death in the equation because but death that's is the extreme part, right? Because we're cool dead people. No, no, yeah. we're not dragging Doctor Deputy into this. I say, waking up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, what if Doctor Deputy puts on a show that makes it seem like the illusion of death is omnipresent, but really, what F, the illusion of death? <laughs> The, that the illusion of death exists, but it's just an illusion and uh, it gets your heart pumping. He's just going to do some sick tricks, man, and you think he's going to die, but uh, who knows? Uh, I'm, can we talk to Dr. Deputy? I, I'm bad at making plans. I'm inside my robot. What do you need? He's just sitting next to you inside the carriage. Do Dr. Deputy, um, hey. Um, yes? Can you, can you really impress um, this this? All I can think of is his name being Noblin now because of <laughs> I don't have his can, can you impress this goblin um, by doing some really cool, dangerous tricks on your tech deck, but make sure to be <clears throat> as safe as possible. I don't know if there's any way you can cheat it to make it look like they're especially dangerous tricks, but we got and we gotta make it. Swirls up around you, oh, new fuck. rogue, and gives you a pop culture reference that that means you know exactly the dangerous but safe trick that the doctor deputy should do. Yeah. What is the it, reference and what is the trick? Holy shit. Okay. This, the dangerous trick is jumping over the gorge in Springfield uh, <laughs> with Bart Simpson trying to become a new daredevil. So I want, I want him to basically try and jump over um, some kind of obstacle that might seem life threatening, but because he's a plucky doll, no real harm will come to him, just like no harm comes to Bart Simpson in the end. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the the front of the robot suit pops open, and the doctor deputy jumps out with his tech deck and says, You got it, Uncle Juice, it's time! Uh, and he, he jumps down and he says, Throw some knives in the air, you goblin man! 
Uh, the uh, noblin, the uh, noblin. Uh, Fuck me. He even got me. <laughs> <Yay! laughs> the Nilbog reaches in and starts pulling out an impossible number of blades and starts juggling them. Oh, I don't like this. Uh, uh, okay. And, all right. All right. Uh, <laughs> everyone stop. And the mist swirls up from beneath you. And you see mist entirely around your caravan. And you see the blades stop, hanging in the air, freezing in place over the Nilbog. We'll take a quick commercial break right there. Oh! <laughs> Time has frozen. The mists have risen up all around you, and the Nilbog's eyes begin to glow an unhealthy, unholy yellow. And a voice comes out of the Nilbog that says, You just keep moving forward. Follow the path and you'll avoid all the danger. We, the Watchers, are impressed by what you're doing. And time snaps back into play. All of a sudden you hear the air moving around you. You hear the world come back and all of the knives fall point down. And stab, 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 stab. And the Nilbog falls dead. And when you look forwards, the ogre is gone. And there is a road, a pathway made of mist. Because the mist is providing for you at this time. Wait, Nilbog's dead? <laughs> no. did, did he have yeah. knives like sticking in him or did he just drop dead? He threw all the knives up into the air. They froze in the juggling. And when time unfroze, they all fell point down and stabbed into him. So he is oh, full of him. knives Shit. and a corpse. Yeah. <gasps> um, I want to run up and, and try that to is shake the, the point. Nilbog. I was going to say, you tried to do that, but right in front of you, you see a doll on a tech deck leap majestically and do a <laughs> sweet ollie over the corpse of the Nilbog. And he's like, yeah, I did it. This is a cool trick. I'm, I oh. didn't think any of that would work i that oh wow God. good job yeah yeah did we just kill this guy i i think the did, mist did yeah and does he like it he says he's died before i don't know if that's true what do you guys that think was, of my trick he uh, did it was great dr w buddy, really that great was little guy really once cool. again sick tricks Great. Why don't you um, come inside, though? Because yeah, get, get, we got to get out of here. Found your calling. Oh, get, okay, we can follow the path now, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Wait, I want to search the body and get all the knives. Hold on one second. Just let me pick them up. Great. How many you knives are there? Perception. Perception? Oh, zero, Adam. Let's we'll see right. what you find. Come on. Uh, the 10. So the thing that is most unsettling to you as you check the various pockets inside the bloody pink robes of the Nilbog is that there are no internal pockets and there are no more knives inside. There were an impossible number of knives coming out, but there were none there to begin with. It's like seeing the opposite of the magic trick and realizing it wasn't rigged somehow. Those knives hmm. did come from an impossible place. But can you roll me a d6? Okay. That is a two. Two of the daggers that are stuck in the Nilbog, as you begin to pull out the blades, they keep snapping off where you're just holding a knife handle with no knife blade attached until you get two. You have two crude, incredibly sharp goblin daggers that you have claimed yes. from this body. Okay. And uh, as you take those daggers out, the body turns to mist and disappears. Oh, man, I was going to get his coat. Oh, no. <sighs> I thought the coat was magic. Oh, okay. the whole, the yeah, whole let's, thing let's seems get going. magic. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, I don't want to stick around here if this is what's happening. We, do you all hear that? That we pleased the watchers in the mist, and was that just me again? No, oh, I, I heard it. I, then, I, I heard it. Time froze. Yeah. Then they off okay. the noblin. Yeah. Jesus. If the mist right. doesn't like something, it can just die. I guess that I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, well. That's they told us to silly. keep it up. They liked what we were doing, which is horrifying in its own way uh i guess though we go like this is the path they we give us we should, yeah we gotta we should, go. oh, all we right go. thank you uh dear nilbog for providing your life so that we may persevere i don't can know can you roll me a religion new rogue yeah yeah i can <laughs> uh okay that is a f okay with my modifier 14. you you could almost swear 
on the wind, you hear a, a the tiniest jangle of bells and just a little. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'll always be with us. And this isn't the like last that. time we've heard from Nilbog. I don't like that. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm shutting the door. <laughs> and I'm like, Rubble yeah. Forskin, let's get going. I, I get in and lie okay. back down on the ceiling. I, and you all roll forwards. Uh, you make very good progress as you reach the edges of the Nameless Graveyard. You pass through and you end up trundling along these various literally barren hills as you're looking out. These are rocks, gravel. You're not seeing any vegetation. You're seeing boulders of various sizes. And somehow, almost impossibly, as you crest each hill, the next hill seems even larger. You don't get any sense of perspective on the horizon as you are riding forwards. As you look out from the carriage, you can see that this path, this winding mist path, is guiding you along the road for some ways. It is not possible to sleep inside this carriage while it is trundling. It is just too hard. You were determined to do so, Shadow Nemesis, but you will not recover your exhaustion from this very shaky ride, though it is deeply satisfying to gently slap all of your friends with your hands uh, on purpose (laughs) or by accident. They're not sure. Okay, I pretend to be asleep. Dangling down. I'm like like hitting them, but I'm like like, like pretending to be asleep. Perfect. You're doing that. Uh, what is everyone else thinking of over the course of this ride? You've had a hell of a time inside this domain. I'm, I'm avoiding Adam arms. <laughs> and I'm looking at Tyler and I'm just, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why the, the nil bark disturbs me more. I guess if you think about everything in the domain is supposed to be evil or torturous or, oh my God, um, you know, uh, what what is the nilbog then do you think he's like another mist walker or like why would you make that in this domain if it was supposed to be you know evil or against sanguine guy i don't i don't know uh i i have my eyes closed and i'm in the process of trying to cast find familiar so i'm just taking the entire time of the trip i'm also slouched down like trying to just get out of Adam arm range and just like, I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm working the magic in my hands, like eyes closed, trying to concentrate. He hits my horn still. It's like, I, I don't, I don't know. Oh, move it. Oh, move it. I, I'm enamored by uh, uh, Jack Magnum who I have on my lap and I'm just like a little baby. Like he's upright, you know, with his bear, with his bottom, his bare bottom, his goat bottom <laughs> on my lap. And I'm holding his little arms up like, Wee! and then I drop them. Them. You're so cute. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And then I give him little belly like kisses, like, and then <laughs> blowing your little raspberries. Yeah, yeah. So I can't. I'm just. I'm in my own little world. So concerned. Can you slightly, roll me? But... Can you roll me an animal handling? Oh, God. <laughs> all right. Guy Bradford doesn't learn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, good. That's a. That's a. That's a. Okay, yeah, no, that's a sixteen. Jack Magnum's loving it. Just fully into all the games, responding, big fan. Big oh. fan of this whole thing. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, he's so cute, you guys. I think everything's going to be okay. So, Tyler, uh, what form does Ivan take when you finally resummon him I'll at the end of the spell? Him, bring him back as a bat. Bat form. Ivan the bat with five HP and constellations right. in his yeah. wings returns to the carriage uh, formed out of the clay that you mold with your hands. Oh, hey, man, what's up? Hey, buddy. Uh, just thought I'd uh, bring you back. We're uh, we're heading up to the, the Barren Hills. Uh, there's apparently my evil doppelganger there, so I figure need all the help we can get. Hope you're, hope you're feeling strong. Uh, I'm going to, you know, Trying to take care of you the best I can. Really sorry that you keep dying, but uh, I got some oh, gift okay. from the it's mist. Hopefully, uh, well, I mean, hopefully you're. Well, I mean, I do what you say, and, and then I come back. It's not like it's not like I'm dying, man. <clears throat> These are just stupid bodies. It's just clay, dude. I'm good. All right, as long as you're good, you know, I, I still feel bad about it. I I don't want it to happen, you know, at all. I, you know, I want you to be able to stick around. I, I can. I can dismiss you to like a pocket dimension and bring you back like instantly. But when you die, mm. I gotta, I gotta do this whole ritual and. Oh, sorry about that, and, man. And also just you dying. I don't like that. You know, I, you seem very cool about it and that's great, but I don't like that you die. So I'm going to try and keep it from happening. 
I appreciate it, but just know that like I'm not dying, man. I'm just going between different realms. It's just a transitory phase for me. It's not like it's not like you you people or you die and then you don't get to come back. I mean, if I could summon you, I'd be like, eh, it's an hour well spent, you know? Oh, you're you're just so chill about this, dude. Uh okay. Well, I, I appreciate your uh uh like nearly cosmic understanding of the situation. Oh, no problem, man. So you want me to like sleep on your horns? Or you want me to go like sleep on that guy's face? And he just points at Shadow Nemesis who's dangling from the ceiling. Mm. Well, maybe maybe Shadow Nemesis because I've been getting I've been getting hit in the head by his hands. And you know, if you're up there, that's that's you know that's three hit points gone or something. So I, I'm not going to say hit points. That's uh, you know. That's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if yeah, if you're up on my head and his arms are flapping around, you know, you, you might get knocked out of this reality again. So yeah, you go you go kind of land wherever it looks safest. Oh, yeah, cool, man. Cool. Uh, Shadow Nemesis, can you roll me a charisma save? Because you are performing being asleep, (laughs) but a bat landing on you might make you give up the game. Oh, okay. Well, my charisma save is plus five. That's true. Also, you do have this little ability called Danger Sense that also applies to charisma <laughs> saving throws. So you have advantage. Oh, okay. Well, I rolled really good, but why don't I just see if I can roll even better? Hell yeah, do it. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'll i go with the first one. Uh, that's a total of 24. 24. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Not only are you asleep, somehow the bat landing on you lets you just throw an elbow that you can get completely away with, but it'll just really tag somebody. Who do you want to tag among your companions? Hmm. Um. Um. <laughs> oh, how evil do I want to make this? Uh, <laughs> uh, the goat. Oh my god! <laughs> You're a monster! I'm asleep. I'm asleep. You're I'm asleep. A monster. <laughs> oh, I know in game we all believe you to be asleep, but holy shit, Adam, that is heinous. <laughs> and you throw an elbow, and the goat oh fails its deck save. So you just tag <laughs> an elbow into a goat that like hits the wall and it's like <laughs> Hey! 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 Nom, 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 nom. Shadow Nemesis! Shadow, wake up! Wake up! And the goat sets its front feet on you, new rogue, and looks up at you and then lashes out with its hind legs. Oh, boy, here we go. What's your AC? Uh, 16. (laughs) Danger sense. 16. (laughs) Unfortunately, your eyes are closed. So the goat lashes out and smashes you with its back two legs. Oh, (laughs) no. Is my bat going to get hit again? And uh, no, bat landed on chest and the okay. goat is kicking for the head that's at the goat's height. So you will take four HP worth of damage as this goat <laughs> kicks you directly in the helmet and really rings your bell. Oh, man. Am I? Can you roll Can me I... a deck save? Okay. Is this my stay sleeping? <laughs> this you'll get a danger <laughs> sense on. on this is can you stay on the roof. Yeah. Oh, danger sense. All right. Um, <laughs> deck save. The hands have to come up every time. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that is a total of 17. All right, you managed to stay on the roof, but you have been kicked in the face by a goat. Oh, what? Oh, I was sleeping. What the heck happened? I don't condone violence, but... Who hit me? <clears throat> well, I mean... You were hitting everyone else. You were yeah. flailing. You hit the what? goat and... Yeah. But, but I was asleep. I couldn't know what was happening. Why was I hit for that? I, I feel like in some sick way, subconsciously, you did know. Uh, I was sleeping, so I'm a flail, flail, flailer. I'm a flailer. You know that. Yeah. Well, that he's been actually... his whole life. Why? That's what he does. Oh, yeah. If that what? goat kicks the other three of you, I can shoot it. <laughs> no, you don't. Hey, oh, Dr. Well, Deputy. Mm. No. Oh, easy, buddy. <laughs> What's the deal? It's just a goat. Oh, look, well, why don't you sleep? In a seat, then. Yeah, come down here nemesis. next to me, and so you can get in the corner and then rest and not flail your arms whenever this is bumping around. Mm. All right. Well, can you? If you uh, want, we can tie you up. You know. Uh, no. For, for your safety and everyone else's, you're a flailer, as you as you as you declared. Well, if you my... know me, I'm a flailer. Uh, you I'm know, a... I'm going to. Um... Yeah, just come over here, and you can sit in this corner. Okay, and then. <clears throat> 
Tyler and Nero can be over there, and you can have a lot of extra room to relax here, Shadow Nemesis. Uh, I'm going to sleep on the roof, I say, as I scuttle out the window and like, and like sleep on the roof and stick to it. Like outside, outside the roof. Okay, so he is sleeping on top of the carriage. Yeah. And the journey continues onwards. Dell, you weren't caught up in any of these particular individual interactions, which is why you were surprised when you look down and see the mist rising up around one of your hands and then evaporating away. And you are holding a glass jar lined in a metal framework. And it has a stopper in the top of it. And inside is a a light brown milky substance. It's like in my hand? Yes, it is. I'm just... Oh, my God. I guess... It's just appeared in my hand from the mist. Where did that go? What's oh. happening? What is it? I don't know. Ty- Tyler, do you, could you know what it is? Don't you have a magic no, no, no what thing is? I, I, I could, yes. Yeah, if you want to... Hand it to me. I'll it'll take a few minutes, but yeah, I can get get that going for you. Okay, I'm here. I guess the mist is very happy today. I hope, and not mayonnaise. I mean, it's bad <laughs> mayonnaise if it's mayonnaise. But yeah, give, give me a few minutes here, okay. uh, and Ryan, I will cast uh, identify as a ritual. <clears throat> All right. So, not knowing what the mists have given you, you pass the jar to another member of your party and really, really hope that nothing terrible is going to happen in the 10 plus minutes this Identify spell requires. Yes. And we'll take a quick commercial break right here. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) And over a couple of tense, questionable, silent minutes, silent minutes, different, Mm. simpler, Nothing happens. And Tyler, you complete your identify spell and you learn that this is an endless bottle of chai tea latte. Ooh. (laughs) It contains chai tea latte. And whoever drinks from it will get to enjoy that drink at the perfect temperature and the bottle will never empty. It keeps refilling itself magically. You do not see any sign of oops mayo. It appears to just be what this bottle is meant to be. Okay. Uh, and when so when the spell concludes, uh, it's uh, it's a jar of unlimited chai tea latte, whatever that is. What? That's you. you like that, right? That's yeah. Tea, I guess it's here. Here, have have your wait, chai wait, tea. Wait, what? How could that? There's chai tea latte. I don't know why the latte. mists know that about you. That raises a lot of questions. Like, yeah, we've not, we've I mean, not talked about like drinks that we enjoy or anything, but no. And I mean, I haven't had this since, like, before the show and everything. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, You you can enjoy that at the perfect temperature, basically. Whenever you drink it, it's, it's, you know, whatever temperature you enjoy that beverage at. (laughs) All right. I'm going to... That's what the spell told me, yeah. Oh, gremlin mode. I'm, like, pulling up my (laughs) knees and I'm pulling this drink and I open it in a tiny sippy. I'm like, what? (laughs) (laughs) It is... Absolutely perfect. Del, can you describe this experience for us, knowing it is exactly what you want? It's, I think that's the thing that when you, when you have like a favorite drink, we can all just imagine our favorite drinks together. When you have a favorite drink, it's like, you know, when, when you go through life and you're like, the horrors persist, but I have a <laughs> tiny treat, you know? And then, <laughs> and I and I like the warm tea because it's like, it's spicy, but it's also smooth. And it's, and it's, when it's warm, it's like, especially when you're feeling low down or you're feeling too cold, it's like a little warm inside of you that feels like <laughs> a tiny hug, you know? Wow. That's, okay. that's how it feels. <laughs> you know what, Del? Yeah. That's exactly what faith feels like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God bless chai latte, then, I guess. Mm, uh, yes, God bless. Uh, yes, Ezra. Thank you. Yeah. God wow. bless Ezra. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mist. I mean, between not having to fight a giant and the Nilbog and this, it feels like the Mist wants us to win. I guess. Seems like, like whatever we've been doing, they're fans of. Yeah. So fighting gargoyles and God, I hope not fighting each other, but maybe yeah. that too. I feel like we've overcome a lot, though. Like um, that's true. 
Yeah. Shadow Nemesis and I are doing pretty well right now. And and hey, did you did 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 you all hear? I mean, Doctor Deputy, he he called me Doctor Juice again after I he called well, you Uncle Juice. Uncle Juice, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> did I say Doctor Juice? Not a Doctor yeah, Juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not. You're not a doctor. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> not you can't anyway. promote yourself, Uncle Juice. Oh. The Black Snake has oh. to do that. Oh, he overheard. That's that's right, Doctor. Also Deputy. in here. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I thought, I thought you might not have heard and might be trying to get some sleep inside of that little contraption of yours. Uh, I wish no one could sleep. There's too much jostling. <laughs> Well, can't you <laughs> fly and just be like neutral from the jostling? Oh, hover! Can you yeah. just float in the in the cabin here, Doctor. That's Deputy? a good idea. Do any of you have rope? Uh, oh, yeah. I believe I do, and I just reach into the cloak of convenience and produce a a rope. Oh, great! Hey. Tie it around me, and then tie it up on this this carriage, and then I can float and just get dragged into along with you. I feel like I'm gonna get a reference through this one this is, this is. <laughs> oh well all right uh, in the meantime I'll, I'll be like yeah sure and i'll tie a rope to him and then tie the rope sure. around like my waist I, i'll i'll help if you want i'm like i'm thinking tie a rope like how they do the hanging plants where it's like swooped around oh i don't like, know how to do that yeah here, here take take it do it yeah <laughs> yep so so tyler accepts your assistance helping to tie a rope around himself and the doctor deputy tyler can you roll me a sleight of hand but the mists swirl <gasps> around you and instead of rolling a d20 could you roll me a d6 <sighs> that's a five. Oh, Yay! Yay! you with five. tie with with Dell's assistance, you tie this rope exactly like one of those hanging baskets. And a few moments later, there is a robot with a jetpack floating next to the carriage being dragged along by you, Tyler. Can you roll me an athletics? Well, uh, well, my athletics, I forget, is not awful on this character, but still, it's only a seven. It's a seven. You are stuck pinned against the door frame by the pressure of yanking the robot along. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but it doesn't injure you. And oh, the doctor right. deputy stays attached. So you're allowing him to sleep at the expense okay. of, I mean, oh. yourself. And that's when you look down and see the mist coiling away, moving away from your waist. And you see a bag, a pouch like bag made of leather with a metallic lacquered gold loop holding the top of it shut that's tied off with a knot. Uh, I, I'll just say, I'll like, all right, I'll, I'll bite um, and I'll pick it up. And I think just like out of like habit of like just being a person and not knowing magic forever, instead of casting identify, I'm just going to open the bag because that's what I would do. I just pick it up and open the bag. When you open the bag and look inside it, you see that it is impossibly large. It's to, to use the Doctor Whoism, it's bigger on the inside, which should be impossible. And then the gold loop just shines a little bit brighter and says, name the children. You are the only one who hears this. Everyone else <laughs> sees Tyler open the bag uh, and the loop start to glow. Na name the children. How many children are there? However many children you have. I don't I don't have any kids, talking bag. I, I don't think I have any kids. Do you, do you just want a name? Do you want to throw a name out there? Do you want to just give you a name? Uh, do you do you can you roll me an arcana? <laughs> yeah. Tyler, are you talking to that? Yeah, bag? do we we hear him, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't down and I say yeah. banging the yeah. roof. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's he talking about children? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 11 is my arcana 11 okay um I keep rolling under 10 this is awful <laughs> you you just hear the bag going uh 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 i'm sorry uh, do you want to start over uh, we can start over i'm sorry if i fucked this up i don't know what this start is start over name the children <laughs> uh the children's names huh? are Huey. Huey. Albert. Albert. <laughs> uh, uh, Dottie. Uh, Dottie. <laughs> and uh, 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 Sloan. Sloan. 
<clears throat> do you want more? Do you want more names or? How many children do you have? I, I don't know what to say there. So I'll say that's all of them. I, the four names are those names. Understood. Child lock activated. Child lock. And the loop oh. glows bright gold again and then goes back to a normal golden color. And I draw the, the the bag closed. And I'm like, I should be cast and identify, but I think I'm figuring this out just by doing stuff. I try to open it. Opens easily. Okay. Uh, and I like, I, I kind of cradle the golden piece in my hand and say, uh, uh, I would like to designate new children. Name the children. <laughs> uh, uh, Dell. Dell. And that, that's it. Understood. No. Child luck activated. And it no. glows gold again for a moment and goes back to normal. And I'll cinch the bag closed and I'll hand it over. Try to like, as I'm squished up against by you, Dr. Deputy, I'll like you want me to pass help it over to Dell. Hold Dr. De or what? Uh, could you take this bag from me and try to open it? Oh, okay. And take, I think it's a set chai tea to the side where it's nice and safe against <clears throat> my side, and then <laughs> take bag. <laughs> Try to open bag. You cannot open it. Uh, how did you open it? Was it like a pull string I, or like a? I just opened it. It was easy to open. It was just yeah. It was just cinched at the top. You just open it. It's As you opening. are pulling at this opening, Dell, you see the golden loop and cinch. It's just not opening up at all. It's not it? doing anything. Try passing it to New Rogue and see if he can open it. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. is, you think his hands will be okay? Yeah, I don't want to singe oh. the bag. Man, that's a good point. Yeah, I no, sorry. Uh, yeah, you know. Hey, wait, wait, I got an idea. I can hold it in between uh, uh, Jack uh, Magnum's little hooves. He, uh, you, you want me to uh, pass it to him? Or? I'm going to, well, let's see if Ivan can open it. Ivan, if oh, you yeah. mind. Okay. Who might oh, him, next yeah. for Ivan. He'll be on I'll, Adam's I'll chest. Be right there. <laughs> yep, Ivan just flies off the top and, in the door. And he's like, hey, man, right. what do you need? Hey. You want me to open this up? Yeah, can you try opening that? Yeah, sure, man. And he just climbs into the bag. It immediately opens from the top. And he's like, yeah, there's, there's nothing in here. but it's So big. cute. Okay, cool. Yeah, so there's like a child lock. And I can declare the name of the child that I don't want opening it, I guess. But otherwise, it looks like it's a bag that has like more room than it appears to be. Yeah, man. They call this like a bag of holding, man. You got like a you got like a child locked bag of holding. Is there anything in there, Ivan? I haven't checked inside yet. <laughs> Ivan takes a glance in. No, nah, man, it's empty as hell. But like, there's lots of <laughs> <laughs> it's empty as hell. Like, yeah, if you got your other stuff, like you could put it in here. And then if you didn't want, like, I think you got that like needle that you like yep. didn't want. You didn't want the crazy guy to get. Like, if you put it in here, it said his name. He can't get in this bag. Fuck him. Is your needle? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's see how wide we can get this opening. Because I got I got a couple things that I could maybe throw in there. Uh, Tyler, uh, why are you trying to get this opening, Tyler? Uh, wide enough to put the uh, target shield inside and the alchemy jug. If I still have that, uh, <laughs> they will both fit inside this bag. Somehow, impossibly, as you stretch it, it gets op like opens wide enough to accept the item, and then snaps back down to its original little. For us D and D players, a little dice bag sized bag. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I'll add the needle to it as well, and say, "Uh, cool, uh, guys. It's a it's a bag of holding. Um, and uh, it's like, even got like, a lock on it that I don't think like Adam has like a bag like this, right? Like just you can just load stuff into. Sorry, Shadow Nemesis. Right. Uh, oh. But uh, I don't think it has a lock. <laughs> and given that he temporarily felt justified in stealing your powder yeah i guess if there's anything you don't want him to have i could put it in here and lock it and just say like his name to the lock as far as i understand i should also maybe say the name of like anyone else we encounter that we think might you know try to take stuff hmm. i mean <clears throat> i guess 
Yeah, maybe I should give you the the master pea powder and keep it. If with you're you. if you're good holding on to it, that's fine too. I don't want to make you do anything you don't want to do. I I, I have to I have to tell you, I feel a little worried that uh, I could go for a praying spell, and uh, when I'm not noticing, I fear that perhaps Shadow Nemesis might try to uh, 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 steal from me again. So um, mm-hmm. maybe I should. Yes, I think I've made up my mind. You with the child lock bag of holding, I will give you. Temporarily, my bag of what Adam wants, um, <laughs> and I'm going to take out. <laughs> I'm going to take out my little, um, oh, my little stone of decent luck, and I'm just going to put that in my pocket. Here you go, pal. Hey, that's that's smart. You should hide that, and then maybe you know there's not enough room, so you should give me back my needle. Uh, it looks like there's enough room, but uh, good try, and I'll just put that. <laughs> Bag of powder in there, and I. Do I hear it. this? Do I hear him say Nuts. that? He's floating outside. <laughs> Back to space again, floating away. Yeah, can you roll me a perception, Shadow Nemesis? Perception zero. Let's see. Uh, that's a nineteen. Woo! You do hear this God, whole man. conversation, but Shadow Nemesis, not being a part of it and being so perceptive of your surroundings, you realized that several minutes ago, your carriage shifted off of the road following the mist. And it's risen up over another hill. And as you look down, because you are the highest up and you are the one who is able to see over the crest, you see what looks like a werewolf and several other armed were monsters ready to ambush the road you were approaching. But because of the path the mist has provided, this may be your chance to ambush them. And that's the end of the episode. Oh my Ooh. God. Mm. That's the end of this episode, listener, but next week you could become a watcher and affect the Jester's adventures by joining our Twitch stream, which happens every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's Toronto time. If you join our Twitch chat, you can give the cast magical items, name NPCs, and decide the events that shape Ravenloft. So catch up on the story, follow Dum Dum Dice on Twitch, and join our weekly stream right away. Jesters of Ravenloft features the voices of players Tyler Hewitt, Del Borovic, Guy Bradford, and Adam McNamara, alongside Dungeon Master Ryan LaPlante. This episode was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra, and Jesters of Ravenloft's artwork was created by Del Borovic at delborovic.com. That's D-E-L-B-O-R-O-V-I-C. Our theme song is Dark Mysterious Halloween Night by Sound Gallery by Dimitri Taras. And our ad breaks use the tracks No Control and Cheeps by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R, whose music is available at freemusicarchive.org. For all things Dum Dums and Dice, including merchandise and how to join our Patreon, you can visit dumdumdice.com or find us on social media at dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B-D-U-M-B-D-I-C-E. Now get out of here before the mist gets you too. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christopher Little, George Dolby, Richard Cranium, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Logan, Fire on Friendly, Grandma Likes D&D, Alan, Stabby Stranger, Glitch Trick, Flynn1138, Alorain Okapi, Schrodinger's Pepper, Guy Edwards, Madre de Gatos, Lady Maiden, Garbo Ape, Locke, Sam Schaefer, Waffle Marine, Dagger Rain, Rob L, Dia De Los Hoodless, Squishy Werewolf, Remy Funky Head, Nomad, the wise paladin of the Badlands, Accent Therapeutic Services in Florence, Kentucky, Lale, Shulzari, Gus Schreider, The Long Family, Jordan Oliver, Richard Wright, Brittany Fenwick, Alex Parr, Old Man Mojo, Dragonfly, The Body Barrelers, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you. 